epistle on this uh, feast of the circumcision is uh, from the uh, St. Paul's letter to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God our Savior has appeared to all men, instructing us in order that rejecting ungodliness and worldly lust, we may live temperately and justly and piously in this world looking for the blessed hope and glorious coming of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and cleanse for himself an acceptable people pursuing good works. Thus speak and exhort in Christ Jesus our Lord. Continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. At that time, when eight days were fulfilled for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, the name given him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Those are the words of the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, this Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Gwendolyn Brunson. This octave day of Christmas, or uh, feast of the purification, or excuse me, the circumcision, you notice the readings are rather short. And uh, when I was a young Methodist, Growing up, they would have us in our uh, Methodist Youth Fellowship, we'd start the meeting with somebody would recite a little Bible verse. And everybody always picked the shortest one in the entire scriptures, Jesus wept. And uh, this is not a whole lot. If I'd known about this one, I might have, I might have thrown that in to show off a little bit. Okay, down to business. Circumcision. Not the greatest fun thing to talk about, but uh, it's uh, used pretty much universally in these days is for hygienic reasons. But circumcision probably was originally a ritual for the passage, uh, a rite of passage from adolescence into full membership in tribes or particular clans in the Middle East. And uh, the particular Right uh, was chosen because it's performed upon an area that is central to bringing forth, biologically speaking, new life. The importance of keeping, we see here, the importance that was put on keeping the clan or tribe going. Uh, this was basically was a sign that the person had given their whole life and life-giving powers with it to uh, whatever God they were worshiping. The formation of Israel, it became exclusively a religious rite, symbolizing that one belonged to the covenant people that were descended from Abraham. St. Paul in Galatians makes the point basically that God made a covenant promise to Abraham because Abraham had proved his faith and his trust in God the only requirement God set out at that point for Abraham to fulfill on his side of the covenant was to, quote, walk before me and be perfect, unquote. That is to approach every aspect of every day as a duty, privilege, and an opportunity to please God or to do his will. Later on, uh, God required this physical circumcision from Abraham and his descendants as a sign that they were in fact trying to live in that manner. They were trying to walk before God and be perfect. Circumcision became a formal sign of entry into the covenant people of Israel. The Old Testament referred to the blood shed as covenant blood. Deuteronomy, uh, though Deuteronomy uh, contained the 
the idea, Jeremiah was the first prophet to really focus in on what he called circumcision of a heart. And that the circumcision of the heart was more important, was superior to mere circumcision of the flesh. The former circumcision of the heart is a total devotion to God's will. The latter of the circumcision of the flesh is simply a physical sign of belonging to the people uh, and sharing their commitment. So it, Jeremiah was pointing to exclusive love of the one God and the practice of fraternal charity. Now in light of all this background, we look at the meaning uh, that Jesus' circumcision had um, uh, in, in the economy of salvation. First off, St. Ambrose, Ambrose says the Old Testament circumcision represented a purification from sin and a setting apart from darkness. Now that's the definition of holiness is not only to be free of sin, but to be set apart for the use of God. That's what holiness is about. And when we say God is holy, uh, we mean that about him, that he is so apart from us, not because he doesn't care, but he's just so far beyond us in the order of being. He is the source of being. So um, this, the uh, purification of sin, Jesus did not need, of course, but he, because he of all people was certainly set apart and was free of sin. The, uh, Jesus did need, need, with quotes around it, circumcision for the one reason, to make him officially part of the people of Israel. Circumcision belong, uh, said that one belongs to God because you belong to God's people. Now, uh, nowadays that the new covenant has superseded the old, baptism says that we belong to God because we belong to the body of Christ, his church. So we see here, and I don't wanna, I'm tempted to digress for a length at length, but I won't. There's an importance here to belonging and it's, it's extremely human. Human beings are social animals. And it's extremely human for us to come into a family, not only with the DNA similar, but also with the history, the customs, the family tree, all of these different things. Uh, that's what it means. It's part of what it means to be completely human. Jesus could have come to us, God's Son could have come to us as a kind of an abstract model of humanity with no connection, but it wouldn't be real because it's the, it's the human beings, uh, humankind who had this history, had this bloodline, had this, these customs and manners, flesh and blood that offended God. And he needed to be not only among us, but one of us in God's plan. So uh, he belongs, circumcision said he belongs to God's people, he belongs to his family and to his uh, community. Circumcision, thirdly, is the occasion, was the occasion of the father's naming of the son. And it's stated specifically that uh, Joseph named him Jesus uh, because that's what the angel told him to name him. And so in, do, in naming him, Joseph is claiming him. Uh, he, makes him uh, he makes Jesus heir to the Davidic title, the, uh, the bloodline of David, King David from way back, of which both Joseph and Mary uh, were members. And it also in this case is a matter of assigning his mission God has assigned his mission through this naming, which means savior, Jesus means savior or one who saves, and his mission is our salvation. So uh, fourthly, 
it is the, uh, the circumcision of Jesus is the first shedding of his blood for our redemption. He's taken on our fallen humanity, though himself without sin, and that is itself an unthinkably great sacrifice. And to then shed blood is even more so. Father Gabriel says a sacrifice reminds us that sacrifice is a sign of true love. Fifthly, Jesus' obedience to God's law as it was then in force uh, really begins at this point. His mission consists, we could say, of the Son of Man returning God's love perfectly and completely as enacted in his perfect and complete obedience, which neither love nor obedience have we returned, and certainly not perfectly. Father well, Gabriel uh, says that the, the church in its liturgy uh, has this story of the spilling of the first drops of Jesus' precious blood to consecrate the beginning of every new year as though to make each year a true year of the Lord. He says, let us begin each year by, quote, circumcising our hearts, unquote, putting aside passions and vices and delusions, and to be purified by the precious blood of Christ and nourished by his grace so that he lives in us. The old man is to be replaced by the new. And we should, uh, especially at this time and with this reminder, we should look to the Lord to help us to put on the new man, which is Jesus Christ himself. Finally, uh, Father Gabriel says, the new year which begins today will acquire value only if lived in this light. Only by this daily circumcision of the heart will grace triumph in us. We have that guarantee at each and every Mass at which we assist. Our Lord is once again, uh, once again, He's not doing it again, but we, we recall and make present His spilling of His precious blood uh, on the cross, which uh, consummated His sacrifice for us and uh, which gives us the grace by which we should be, especially in the new year, trying to live. May God bless you, in the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.